uh, detect any attacks. You don't care. If the data is good, you, you pass it through. And this particular script is supposed to have only one parameter. So what we're doing here, in the first rule, we're checking the number of parameters for this script, and we allow only one. In the second rule, we're checking the names of all parameters to the script, and we allow only the name stat ID. Uh, and in the third rule, we are looking into, into the stat ID parameter, making sure that it's a number, actually, that it can contain only digits, uh, anywhere from one to three digits. So this is a perfect example of a positive security model that works really well, because you just ensure that you only get this one parameter, and that the only thing that you get in the parameter is a number, and then you're safe. If someone attempts to perform an SQL injection here, it's going to have a really tough time, because it's not going to be, used, it's not going to, uh, be able to use any of the char characters apart from the digits. Um, Whitelisting, uh, that's also a frequent example, a uh, frequent uh, requirement from users. Users want to simply exclude certain IP addresses from being um, uh, analyzed, so we al want to allow uh, all requests for these IP addresses. And this is more an example of the uh, richness of the most security rule language, because I'm giving you three different ways to do the same thing, just to showcase what, what, how most security works. In all three cases, we're examining the remote address t a variable, which can, not surprisingly contains the remote address. In the first case, we're using a, the a string equality test. In the second, we're using begin suite. Uh, and the third, we're actually using regular expression. So the first example will only allow one IP address. In the second example, because we're using the begin suite operator, we uh, actually allow the entire C class, which is the 254 um, addresses. Um, so anything uh, beginning with 192.168.254. And in the third case, we, it's a slightly more complex uh, example with, uh, that we allow uh, only uh, three IP addresses. Um, so only addresses ending in one, two, or five are allowed uh, from the, from the uh, address range 192.168 and 254. So in a future version, we might even add another operator that will allow you to actually use proper network ranges uh, to do things. And here's, uh, where, here's where it gets interesting. If you want to track activity per IP address, and this is uh, what, what, what I mentioned, uh, persistence, the first thing you need to do, you need to decide how, to, how you want to track it. In this case, we're going to create a key which is created out of, out of the remote address. So you see that we're using the init call, init call action action, and we're, we specify the key is going to be the remote address. So from this moment on, uh, every new address, that uh, new transaction that uh, comes in with a new IP address, we basically create a small database where we use IP addresses as keys. And then after, after that, we can do things with, it, with, uh, with uh, uh, the state. And in the second example there, we created a variable which we call score, which we uh, can increase or decrease uh, depending on what happens with rules. And uh, in the second example, you have a... Um, uh, we're checking the, the value of the variable score, and if it's greater than 20, then we start to block. So this is uh, something you can use sort of for anomaly that, that, uh, type that, uh, protection, where you increase a counter if, when you see attacks, and only once a counter reaches a threshold, uh, you, can, um, uh, you, can, you can block. And in the third example, you can see how when you have a rule that does something, you can increase the value of the IP dot score, uh, score by one. Moving on, this is equally interesting, is that we allow um, using rules, uh, most security actually understands, has a concept, of a, a concept of application. Within the application, it understands sessions and it understands users. So what we do, uh, all, all you need to do actually is tell it where the session ID is. In this example, we're looking at the cookie and we have a PHP application that uses a uh, PHP sesh, uh, sesh ID a cookie name to store session IDs. And what we do, we'll take the contents of that cookie and tell to more security, tell more security that it's a session ID. And s after this rule is executed, again, you'll have persistent storage that's specific to this particular session. So um, not only you can choose what we had previously to track users by IP addresses, you can track them by sessions. And you can even, I don't, ha I don't think I have an example for this, you can even track users. Because if you have a rule to detect logging events where people are supplying their usernames, uh, 
you can add that and you can take the username and you can store it inside the session storage. And by, by doing that, you will have known for each request both the session ID and the user ID. Also, the nice thing is the, the information that you set about the session ID and the user ID will be recorded in the audit log. So in the GUI tool, you, you'll actually be able to list all requests coming from a sing, single user or all, 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 all just from a session. OK. Who said that? <laughs> I think so as well. Um, uh, so moving on. Uh, sanitizing data before logging, this is just an example, I told you it's possible. You can do it in many ways. You can do it by name if you know in advance what the parameter names are. In my case, this is password, password again, and old password. However, you can also have a rule um, that looks at all parameter names. And if you see the word password in any of the names, no matter which variation it is, it, it, we can sanitize it. Or we can uh, sanitize based on content. I mentioned the verify CC operator before. Well, in the last example here, we look at all parameters, and we actually verify each parameter and try to see if it's a credit card number. And if, if it validates as a valid credit card number, we sanitize it. So you can have this sort of rule that, that, that to, to help you. Um, so that you don't have to do a lot of work to, make the, to, to uh, implement sanitization. OK, one thing I really like about more security, and basically I like uh, in addition to everything I've said so far, what I like about most security is its flexibility. And I think we are the only web application file that actually allows you to take data, transform it in any way possible to counter evasion. And this is an example where you have three different attack payloads. The simple one, which is drop table, obviously it's an SQL injection. The second uh, example is where evasion is used with a mixed case and there's, an, there's a white space between the, the two words. So that, uh, that's going to be making uh, uh, that's going to be confusing some tools. And even in the third case, you have an SQL comment used as, as a separator between the two words. So with this sort of flexibility, and I'm, I'm just scratching the surface of what's possible when it comes to evasion, it's very difficult to write rules that will actually be, mean something that will actually catch attacks. So what we have in most security is a concept, concept on transformations. We start with the original string, and then we have a pipeline of transformations that uh, are one added to another, and then uh, operators only run after the transformation is complete. So to counter this particular version there for about SQL injection, I have the rule on the, uh, on the bottom that is still, still simple. It still looks for drop table. However, we uh, applied three transformations before we do that. We convert everything to lowercase. We replace all SQL comments with uh, white spaces, and we compress white space. So by doing this, we've normalized the input, uh, uh, input data so that we would match and perform meaningful matches. Um, this is an example of using a geo IP operator uh, that would allow you to look up where the IP address is coming from. So if you, all your clients are coming from your own country, you can simply disallow every, everyone else to come in and, and, and attack your application. And here's... When I mentioned that um, most security is, fl is flexible, here it is. Um, it is um, example where we can actually decode what's available in the uh, basic authentication request header. If you look at the basic authentication request header, it starts with the word basic, and there's some base 64 encoded stuff there. And then it, we'll find, well, I found that in uh, many applications, people actually have base 64 encoded stuff. Well, we have an operator that allows you, a transformation function that allows you to decode it. So what we have in the first, in the rule on the bottom, we have the first, first rule that will take the request